Space Rover, Episode 4, Rewinding the Watch, Audio Version. The Space Rover roams pointlessly through space. Inside, our good captain is piloting the craft on a relaxing jaunt on the far end of the Space Commonwealth, drinking some sort of clear liquid. Hopefully not spare antifreeze. With a quiet whir, a man appears beside him. And just what have you been up to for the past few hours? Exploring file systems, directory structures. What for? You never know what you will find. Largely illicit pornography, true. But even that can be used for extortion if you know how. Wait a minute. I don't recognize that. Why should you? Don't tell me you've been accessing someone else's systems again. If they are not going to encrypt them, what's to stop me? There was a saying that the innocent have nothing to hide. However, I think in this case it is just plain old naivety. Yeah, and in the meantime, I get in trouble for cracking passcodes. You bought it. It broke it. You pay for it. What am I going to do with you? Well, something nice, preferably. <sighs> Anyway, you can find out all kinds of interesting stuff. Wanna know why the Plutonian governor was assassinated in 2143? The Plutonian governor has not been assassinated. Ever. He got the flu once, but got better. Ah, what a tumultuous week that was. Not yet, but he will be. I got the assassin's notes right here. Such neat handwriting, too. The assassin's what? I did not even know they made poison-coated cufflinks. Can we get one, pretty please? It would really go well if you fine taste and have haberdashery. My what? No! And don't you feel an ethical responsibility to inform the authorities? Eh, I decided he was a tyrant anyway, complete with finely trimmed mustache. Suggestive facial hair aside, how, pray tell, did you come up with that? Pluto, being only a dwarf planet, is one of the more underfunded terraform colonies. This has led to a hard-talking, but in the end rather do-nothing, separatist movement. The Plutonian governor was elected as a separatist, and yet, nearing the end of his second term, the place is still formally in the Commonwealth's grasp, without even the slightest concessions towards self-governance. Mayo within Pluto is still sorted on Neptune, by way of Venus. Well, that is hardly surprising, is it? Change rarely walks that way. You need more than greased palms. Maybe you're greased mortals. He will probably win a third term, given that the Separatists know that he is the closest to actual power they can get in this system. The general public on Pluto tend to have anti commonwealth sentiments, and yet the government doesn't follow them. What is more tyrannical than a non-people power government? The lanes you go to justify your petty meddling in other people's lives. I could have safely survived, maybe even thrived, if you hadn't spent that moment of my life with that waffly, apologetic, hidden-as-witty commentary. Eh? You and I both could have thrived in the time you spent sporting out that headbanger. And B, excuse making hidden as insight. What do you call political speech other than excuse making? Seriously, if you're going to talk to me like that, I might as well go back to network cracking. <sighs> At least holograms do not yet have the vote. Certainly will do so. Pleasure doing business with you. So then, we've gotten a commission, another child's party, Little Timmy's got such rave reviews, we've made the Michelin's Guide in youth catering. Something perhaps even more auspicious than that. It formed the crew. Oh, one of them. Yeah, yeah, just do it, please. Computer, activate the hollow emitter system. Hey! I was just about to win that game of Pong against the ship's computer. About damn time, too. It's only my fifth attempt... this evening. Oh, boo-hoo, so sad. We got work to do. Oh? Someone has actually had the ill sense to hire you? Forge Torf kept quiet, then. Are you kidding? He was quite pleased to have a fleet veteran attend to his task. That whole Labrador story has finally died down, has it? Funny what a little blackmail can do to a free press to make them forget. I'm almost sorry for Terry. He can't be very popular with Big Mash's magnetic management right now. Could also be the public's tendency to collective amnesia. 
Anyhow, we will be picking up and delivering a three-month supply to one Freedom Station. Freedom Station? Don't tell me. It's where anarchists come to get all the swap bomb-making recipes. Mmm, smell the glycerin. Well, nothing so 18th century, I'm afraid. The station is a small, private one, owned by a Bernard Enschenko, an eccentric who decided to buy out an old rendering plant, only to never leave it again. He lives alone, apart from one holographic servant. Another hologram? Yes, sir. Made to look like his deceased wife. Apparently, the station is his way to be free from the horrors and hassles of the rest of the galaxy. That's him and his hologram. Hmm, he has taste in light. I might like this mission. Even so, sounds like somebody has issues dealing with the past. What a hornet. As long as he's a well-paying lunatic, I don't really care. So why us, then? His usual supplier has been delayed, and his stocks were beginning to fall short, so he started looking for someone else to get them to him a little more promptly. Hard to find good people these days. Your placement of sugar in their delivery craft's plasma injector was a little underhanded, though. I guess we had better get going, then, as we don't want him asking for his money back simply because it took us 30 minutes longer to pick up and deliver than agreed. Do you think we should also add in a complimentary mint? A fruit basket? A discount coupon for Jamtastic Space Ale! Wake up, sir. We appear to be here. But there is a problem. Uh, what problem? You're not leaking coolant again, are you? My structural integrity is fine, sir. My concern is a matter of the structural cohesion, or sheer existence, for that matter, of another object. Get to the point. Freedom Station. It is not there. You mean you improperly set our course? Wrong left turn after Eris? No, sir. Our position corresponds to the points on all three axes specified. We should be right next to it. It is not there. <sighs> all right, let me take a look. <whistles> hmm, you're right. I don't see a station there. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There is something. I'm putting it on the screen. It appears to be the support frame for the station, but nothing else. Are you suggesting that someone came by and shot up the place? No, sir. There would be debris floating around and blast marks on the frame. It looks more like the station has yet to be built. What are you suggesting? It has already been built! A message buoy beside it is transmitting Space Station under construction. Up for sale July 13th. 2134. The atomic structure of the frame indicates it was just recently scaffolded. Are you telling me the station was suddenly reconfigured to be the way it was when it was being built? It seems to be the only plausible explanation. All right, inform the crew. This again? Yes. Computer, activate hollow emitter. What are you doing? I was having an excellent defrag back there. Always the same. You need to defrag? What kind of archaic file system are you running? Hey, I just defrag for fun. You should try it sometime. We'll leave stress like nothing else. Anyways, what do you want? We appear to be encountering temporal difficulties. What? Lost your wristwatch, Captain? Have you checked behind the cushions? Freedom Station has relapsed back to its original foundation, and no, before you ask, you are not right about him being a rabid bomb maker after all, as there's no evidence of blast damage. What are you suggesting, then? That the self-delusional oaf had a run-in with a flex capacitor instead? I am not suggesting anything. I am just saying we have a problem. Namely, the state of my commission. We don't have a billing address who does not live here yet. Captain, if I may... How much do you think the supplies in the back are worth on resale? Hmm, well, that's settled then. I doubt he'll want them by the time the station is refinished anyway. I just love the logic of cause and effect, and the petty criminal mind for that matter. Hey, Peter, get us out of here. It's too weird around here. Yes, sir. Seeking out a more socially acceptable level of weirdness. Oh, 
All right, excellent. We should arrive at your docking port in three quarters of an hour. James, out. Mr. Fence has managed to find a buyer for our stolen goods, then. They are not stolen. Just a little bit too early on the delivery front for Mr. Anchenko. Hang on. My sub-ether receiver is alerting me of flash news reports. Oh, yes. Another war, stock market crash, or the great tsunami? Something nice and deadly, I hope. I have not had a very good year. No. These articles seem to concern objects disappearing or regressing, just like the station. Hmm, congratulations for that. I just successfully convinced myself the scandals were 40. Or on hallucinogenic coffee sweetener or something. Before you have to go and be all Mr. Wardley informed. The Commonwealth Prime Minister has called his top scientific advisors to discuss what is going on. He has also called his security advisor under the assumption that this is actually a vast criminal conspiracy. Nothing like a man of paranoia to be able to launch nuclear armaments, eh? Still, that's the lot, isn't it? What's this supposed to do with us? Just thought I would throw it out there, sirs. That is all. Well, I don't care what is causing all this, as long as you can help me get a little cash. In the meantime, I'll set the ship's scanners to look for that signature I got off Freedom Station. We will try and stay clear of those anomalies in future. Or past and present, for that matter. Message sent. Okay, I've just settled the account with the manager here. Let's unload our stock. <sighs> if you say so. Get a move on already. After all, you are exactly as strong as the middle projects you to be. I'm taking one, I'm taking one, alright? Okay, my turn now. Wait, wait a minute. Did Hologram just take both those crates at once? Hmm. Person I've been giving him enough credit. Well, I'll just take this one over here. Wait a minute. Hologram can't take three at once. And he did not pass me. I only took the forced one, so where did that other crate suddenly go? What's going on here? What the hell? I was just holding one! Where did it go? I guess I'll just sit down in this other crate here and clear my eyes. Ow! Beetle! Hologram! Get over here now! I said I was coming. No need to get all anal attentive. Am I the only one seeing anything really weird happening? As far as I know, what happened to all the supplies? I don't know. They just seem to have disappeared. Is it possible that someone in here is stealing them behind your back? It's either that, or we have a portal guy with an unnerving taste for boxes of... Spaghetti marinade? The Wrath of Freedom Station and its delusional keeper, maybe? Ha ha, how droll. Hey, come and take a look at this. It's gone! The entire landing dock is up and vanished! Hmm. Add spaceship docks to your poltergeist's favorite collectibles. Let's get out of here before you add sentient beings to that list. Judging by the fact that that last box was full of backup electronics, I should think it would want me and check Slave Boy here first. And more importantly, before the adjacent dock holding the rover follows suit as well. There. We should be a safe distance from whatever was causing the disappearances now. At least in theory. So what the hell has been going on anyway? This is really starting to annoy me. Yes, we can tell. Search me. The last time you said that were flowing to my account passwords, I spent over two hours searching your directory structure for the damn things. Please use a different turn of phrase. Very well. Actually, I may have found something that could vaguely explain what was happening back there. Oh? I found this document online about a very similar event. The author's explanation involved a time paradox breaking the rules of cause and effect. A lime pair of socks? What are you talking about? A time paradox. 
What were you talking about? Something has happened to create an inconsistency in continuity. Because of this event, objects can vanish into thin air. Okay, enlighten us then. Well, for example, say an object was created at one point in the universe and transported later to another. This is a plain example of cause and effect. The cause was the transportation of the object, and the effect was it appearing at a new point in the universe. If we were to erase the cause, the effect cannot happen. The object stays at the point of its creation. Or if the cause of the object's creation did not ever happen, the effect of its existence cannot happen either, unless it just disappears. Poof! Precisely. May I remind you that this piece of writing is from a science fiction fanfic database, flagged in subcategories weird, disturbing, immature, and at the same time, adult. As such, I hardly think we can take it seriously, and I have a sinking suspicion that I don't want to read any of it further. Well, to be fair, we hardly have a better theory than the wisdom of perverts. Still, we could be a bit more scientific, and in better taste. Okay, how? All scientific hypotheses must be theoretically testable. I think it is time for an experiment. Agreed. Let us go down to that large asteroid and begin. Alright, fine. We'll give it a go then. What do you mean you're betting against it? This whole experiment was your idea. Right. Unlike you, I saw a money-making opportunity out of a disturbing time phenomenon. Oh, I saw plenty. Just not one so counterproductive, you dishonest weasel. I personally prefer the term scheming optimist. But whatever floats your boat. Besides, does the name Anchenko still mean anything to you? That was different. It was petty theft. Whilst I am merely playing the game of chance. Quite profitably, I hope. All right, Captain. We are ready. Good. How exactly is this going to work, then? It is fairly simple, though a bit inelegant. I have a short track laid down with a cart on it. I shall roll it down the track, and thus create a temporal cause. I shall then excite the particles within, based on a signature I read emanating from the vanished docking bay. Then we will see if the cause is erased and the effect vanishes, causing the cart to reappear at the start of the track. Sounds good. Begin. It would seem the trains are not even running on time. The cart is abruptly back where it started. Unfail. You rigged it by designing it to walk. I demand an untainted sample. I could throw you out the window. If you were to just fly away, you would win. But then I'd lose out either way. Only pragmatically. Your honor would be vindicated. Sure, and I'll expect you to honor the bet by the end of tomorrow, hologram. Or I'll corrupt your image and give you an obscene lavender shot. Petty gambling aside, you two, there is a more pressing matter of what we should do now. We know what is happening, but not why, and thus what to do about it. Shouldn't it simply be a matter of isolating the paradox in question? Yes, but given an over six billion year history of our planet alone, we have a lot of time to correlate through. Perhaps we should start with the big one. What are you driveling about, Hologram? No, no. He does have a point. The reports I have seen have shown that some of the objects affected are not man-made, or even near any human settlements. Therefore, it seems reasonable to exclude actions from Earth as being those in paradox. And what one cause has had more effects across the board than the original Big Bang that expunged all matter throughout this expanding universe in the first place? Have you all been attending Open University behind my back or something? I, for one, have. And I like to stay informed on the state of matters or, in this case, matter itself. In any event, this still does not help us much. We have tested a function, 
and have a hypothesis for its origin. But we still have no plan of action. Isn't it obvious? We need a time machine. Oh yes, and you know where to purchase one, do you? Eddie's amazing fundamental physical lawbreakers? Pop in today for amazing discounts on the out of this world faster than light drive and the eternal perpetual motion machine. Or perhaps you are a medium hoping to consult the ghosts of Einstein, Bohr, and Hawking. The level of pseudoscience seems about right, though. Actually, sirs, I have an idea. We need not disrupt the flow of time ourselves by venturing backwards, as the universe itself is doing a sufficient job of inverting events. I will start seeing if I can either make a drive to take advantage of this, or plot out a course heading in order to use some such temporal singularity. In English, please. He is going to go play of circuit boards and star charts. In layman's terms, yes, indeed. All right, in the meantime, I am going to count my money, both on the supplies we sold and your imminent honoring the bet hologram. Next interstellar calamity I'll beat you, I swear. Next catastrophe. Hmm, tricky. What? Problem? A little bit of one. I have lost three of my prototypes already. Because of the paradox? Or carelessness? No. I actually think it is indicating I am really onto something here. Then why the problem? Because it is just the boxes. Utilizing the temporal signature I recorded is a fickle art of flowing through past events and I seem to be only able to localize it onto a single object. Which won't do us much good. We could hack it onto Hologun's portable middle and he can go and check it out. Sure, he'd be floating through the void from the beginning of eternity onward, but just think of the history you'd witness. What? Stars twinkling whilst empires rise and fall around me? Possibly a few amusingly shaped asteroids once a millennium? Yes, a highly entertaining way to pass the interminable eons. All jokes aside, I would like to get back to this, please. All right, all right. Now that was joking. Much. I would offer introductions, but given our past or present acquaintance, I think it would be pointless and a source of strained grammar. Two Peters! Well, now we really are hallucinating on coffee supplements. I remember that line. Still do not care for it. Too clunky. At any rate, I do believe this is what you are all looking for. A complete prototype? I do not know. I came here and gave it to me, and then used it to come give it to me again. As I am now doing. So I guess it works. If a little tediously. It would only be tedious if I understood any of it. As is, it is simply a confusing jumble. Ah yes, I recall that line too. You are quite dull the second time around, Hologram. Moving on, I have fulfilled causality as best as I think I am supposed to. So I guess I should cap my paradox and be off then. Yes, I think that's probably wise. I don't think I could stand two of you of Hologram around as well. That remark too. It is like rereading a novel around here. Oh, for a world-class copy editor. Anyways. Oh yes, before I go, one more thing. I was told to warn you about the cap- Cap? Achino? Where is he on about, do you think? I am quite sure. I think Peter to be just warned us about you, Captain. Me? What do you think I am going to do? I don't know, but I think you should be sectioned just in case. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Captain, incoming ship. Not now, Peter, anyways. Hologram, that is by far the most offensive thing you have ever said. What? It appears to be another rover, sir. Yeah, yeah, carrying on. I am tired of you always running me down. I mean, after all. I am the one who owns you, you know. Without me, you'd still be a homeless drifter, and I'll trust you to make a few less remarks like that one given. Captain, you are hailing us. Peter, for Capricorn's sake, stop interrupting me! I know you're at the time drive. Stop and listen. That goes for you there, too! 
Stop interrupting me, everyone! Well, then, you can start by not interrupting me. Uh, who are you? I would have assumed you at least would recognize me. Should I start a fresh pot, or is this just the right level of psychoactive sugar high? Now then, are all assembled mature and sedate enough to actually be in a position to listen to me? Go ahead. Just in case, I'll record the conversation for future reference. Your faith in our collective memory and attention span is awe-inspiring, Peedle. Well, let me get right to the point. You lot are at present attempting to be goody two-shoes and correcting the horse's ills. Heed my advice. Stop it. Why should we? I don't fancy being degenerated into a flashlight or something. Aren't you wondering why I'm... <coughs> like this? I know, well, knew you from your perspective. You don't take care of yourself. It does not surprise me that you end up like that one day. Shut, Shut the, the hell, hell up, hologram! Hey, I'm just saying. Those flesh and blood are only flesh and blood after all. I still wish to know your complaint, sir. Yeah. Well, gag the light one, and I'll explain this to you. <clears throat> you are planning to make a journey to the beginning of time and correct a paradox. Did it occur to you the implications of this? Well, we did consider the reality of what would be if we did not proceed. The Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle states that even the most inconsequential action, <clears throat> or even mere observation, can exert an influence on particles in the microverse. Let me just put it simply. You f things up right royally. There, there. You see, the bet was not fail. You, I mean he, just said so. Heisenberg. Hologram, you really need to learn about time and place. Besides, that money is still mine, you little rat. And furthermore... Him. I, for one, would like to know how we... things up. Exactly. With the universe in a pretty big bang state, all matter was compressed into an infinitesimal mass that was very easy to manipulate. Your minimal input irrevocably changed the structure of all matter everywhere. And how does that give you the lungs of an 80-year-old chain smoker? By correcting the paradox, you did resolve the old causality, but it remained with the new modifications. Structures have been shifted and variables tweaked, and now everything is brittle and unstable. <coughs> <coughs> including me. But we do not have any choice. If we take no action, we will all be erased. How do you know? Who are you to take up the initiative? I mean, who are we? Traveling refuse of the universe or what? Leave it to someone else and see what happens. Just don't try and play heroes yourself. We don't have it in us to pull it off properly. <coughs> I know. I don't think I want to rely on others for my own survival, thank you very much. We will keep your warning in mind, sir. We will try and interfere as little as possible, and- No! If you attempt to proceed, I will open file. I am deadly serious here. <laughs> Are you insane? You kill me and your boat cease to exist. Or something unpleasant, at least. I'm not even sure anymore. I'd rather kill myself. Then leave me the way you're going to leave us all. I don't take threats from anyone, even myself. I am afraid there is nothing you can say to stop us from doing what needs to be done, sir. After all, Mother always taught us to stand up to bullies, remember? She also taught us to be true to ourselves, you nitwit. Which includes me. Yeah, well, screw the future. I am me as well, and I don't care who you are. They are like brothers. Six-year-old brothers. You lot are obviously unable to listen to reason. <coughs> so, farewell. Yep, entirely like brothers. Peedle, give me the guns. No, Peedle, you take the guns yourself. I don't want to die. Just leave it to me. You'll be mincemeat in two seconds. I shall metal man the gun. Captain, keep us moving, and Hologram, watch the readouts. Incoming rounds! Move us, Captain!
That sounded like a close one. Steady. We're coming around. You ready to file, Beetle? We are lined up his engines. File now. Good shots. He should be disabled. Well, I'd say see you soon, but by then, you will be me. Not if I can help it. No, if can I. Farewell again. To yourself. <laughs> He is coming on a ramming vector using his ship's remaining momentum. You really are desperate. Nothing new there. Captain, can you get us out of the way? I don't think so. This thing is hardly that maneuverable, you know. Can you blast him away? Not unless you want to be slammed by wave after wave of future rover rubble. Peter, why don't we just activate the Paradox Drive? Yeah, good idea. Hoy up and get us out of here. On it. Impact in 10, 9, 8, Impending. 7, Six, five, four, three, two. Activating now. Location beyond the universal frontier. Projected age of our universe minus two minutes, thirty seven seconds. We made it. Indeed, we did. Here we are before point zero on the negative A axis. Negative A axis? Not hold of that one. Yes, well you know of the three spatial axes. You mean width, X, height, Y, and depth, Z? Precisely. And those are the first three dimensions. And the fourth? Time, isn't it? Exactly. And if this works as the number system, at this point, we would go into the negatives. Thus, marking it on the minus A axis. Yes, and assuming an additional axis of probability, we would have... Negative B? How did you know? Just lucky. So, what now? We need to ensure the creation of the universe and break the reversion paradox. Just wait a second. If there's no universe yet, then where are we? The void of nothingness between universes. Our universe is actually right over there. But that is just a dot. Are you sure that is not just a speck of dot on the screen? Well, maybe. No, trust me on this, sir. That is the universe in compressed form. Heavily magnified and abstracted. Now then, hmm, hmm. I get the feeling that maybe a plan was in order before we came out here. We had insufficient time to prepare. This will require further processing. In the meantime, here's some music. Well, this could be a long one. Better get comfortable. <sighs> Careful repositioning your extremities. Ow! Where did Hologram go? You disrupted his image. I think his emitter just fell into the control panel by the turret controls. <sighs> now I have to go and look for him. Which is the open hatch button? That was the trigger, sir. Whoops. Captain, did you see a holographic emitter fire out the gun port? Either that, or your load of oversized civil bullets for fighting space werewolves. He is heading for the universe. I think now would be a good time to assume the duck at cover position, sir. Whoa! Peel, where are we? The ship's chronometer seems to indicate we have returned to the present, 2142, of the year of our secular space lord, the Common Era. That's good, I suppose. Any damage? Not that I can detect. I am having the computer do a matter analysis. By comparing a newer sample with pre-revision data, we shall see if we have made any fundamental structural changes to the makeup of the universe. Well, 
That was sure one hell of a ride, eh, Hologram? Huh? If his emitter survived the expulsion and explosion, he has spent the last 13.7 or so billion years drifting as the universe continually expands, sir. Well, I guess you'll just have to continue that voyage. It appears so, sir. Ah, that is one bit of good news. The amount of divergence is minimal. The curse seems broken. Yeah, well, I still think I would take out a health insurance package, just in case. I do not suspect that it would cover temporal-based degradation, sir. Maybe as an act of God. Who the hell is that now? Surely can't be me again. No, sir. It is Bernard and Shinko. Something about stolen goods? Tell him to go away. I'd rather go through another time wave than talk to him. Wait, sir. That could be it. What? What do you mean? If we act quickly, we can still utilize the last temporal jump to accelerate our course of action, and then be snapped back to our present position after the timeline reasserts itself. Why would you want to do any of that? Sounds like a big headache. May I submit a novella entitled Journey to the Edge of the Universe? We could get there in a matter of seconds rather than billions of years, and get back without having ever really left. Full speed ahead, Mr. Jules Vaughn, and bye-bye, Mr. Anchenko. All right. Based on my calculations, this should be it. The ends of our universe. The opening of the infinite void. Are you going to keep doing that? Now are you sure we're even going to be able to find him? Surely this must be like the proverbial needle in the haystack. Only if the haystack was expanding at an ever-increasing rate, sir. That does not make it any better. Activating scanning and sensor devices. Hmm. No results returned. I shall try extending the range. Alright, but I'm starting to think this is not quite so smart an idea. No. Still no readings. Longer range? Oh, this is impossible. We will never find something as small as the middle. Damaged windshield detected. Hull integrity compromised. Contact nearest service technician. Ah, there we have it. One 13-plus billion-year-old holographic emitter. And just 4.5 contemporary cracks in the windscreen. Remind me to take you to New Vegas when this is over, given that improbable bit of luck. Specifically to pay the Neo's Glacial. How does it look? If it was you at age 13 billion, you would look considerably worse, I imagine. Do you think it still works, after all that time? Only one way to find out, sir. It does not seem to have been disturbed that much, assuming the initial shock of the Big Bang was not too traumatic. Now that is one hell of a big F. Well, as much as I hate to say it, I find it hard to say that is not normal for him. Cruel aside, aside, sir, you are partially right. There is hope of salvage. Well, I will be. Recognizable vocabulary. Could you please do something, Peter? This is starting to get really old. I am having trouble rebooting his core program. Dribble down, ex captain, the digital dishonorably discharged him. Enough of this. I'll kick that glorified toy. <laughs> Start process initiated. Well, I will break my warranty. Brute force repair. Where am I? What's going on? Nothing much. You just triggered the Big Bang and spent 13 billion years riding the universe's most influential tidal wave. You know, nothing major. The usual. Quiet afternoon. Oh, ha ha, funny. Hmm. 
Wait a second. Do you know what this means? No. I created the universe. No. Let's not overstate things here. I am God! Just happened to have thus spoke Zarathustra on standby? Of course. For I, your creator... Beetle, get us back to the present before he goes all ten commandments on us. Forsooth, I shout. Captain James and his future self was played by Hamish Wilson. Malcolm Wilson played Peter Gansley, his future self, and the narrator, while Graham Wilson played the one true god hologram. The head writer was Graham Wilson, with Hamish Wilson as head editor and Malcolm Wilson as director. The series was written using LibreOffice Writer, and the music, audio effects, and general editing were completed by Malcolm Wilson using Audacity. Space Rover is a Fedora and Arch Linux powered project, hosted by Iculus.org, mirrored on the Internet Archive and YouTube, while distributed in free and non patented OGG Verbis and FLAC formats. Special thanks to Grant Nelly Productions and Douglas Adams for the series' inspiration, as well as the venerable Land Rover car manufacturer. Copyright 2013 through 2020 Malcolm Wilson Multimedia. Dual licensed under the GFDL and CCBYSA copy lefts. Usage attributions available on the Space Rover website at http colon slash slash icculus.org slash mwm slash rover.